Hi there, um, if you are watching this video uh, because you are, uh, you've are you watched the previous video then I'm actually very happy that I didn't scare you too much when it comes to naming uh, the names and formulas of polyatomic ions uh, anions in this case um, anions being negatively charged particles in the previous video I just called it ions but they are all negatively charged and uh, there's only a few that's positively charged with the polyatomic ions um, okay so in the previous video let me quickly recap and then uh, and show you how we can get the names of the polyatomic ions for the other ones okay so we looked at um, at the T41 model T41 and uh, here was the T there was the T all of these are uh, got three oxygens here is the four okay here is the four all of them got four oxygens and here is the one all of these ones got uh, three oxygens um, so this can either be T41 or T43 makes more sense but that one consists of three little blocks and um, so each one of these gets three oxygens okay um, and then we well there's different ways of finding it but um, the this one had a, two, a three negative charge this one had a two negative charge this one had a one negative charge, this one had to be the same, so two negative, this one started over, so three negative charge, two negative charge, one negative charge, three negative charge, two negative charge, one negative charge, and then this one has a two negative charge, you can see all of these are two negative, and one negative, so if you don't know where the heck I'm getting all this from, then please refer to the previous video, and, uh, and you'll see it's really not that difficult. Okay, now all of these um, received the prefix so let me take an example like uh, sulfur sulfur when it gets its four oxygens okay and it's a two negative charge is called sulfate sulfate okay now sulfate he um, is the base this prefix this is going to be the base and I call it the base because from here we're going to name the other anions that have a different number of uh, oxygens okay and here is the process that we are going to use if we take the base okay we know that the base gets the prefix uh, the suffix pre yeah, suffix sorry I think I've used that in the wrong way in a previous video Okay, anyways, it gets the suffix eight. Okay, like sulfate chlorate. Okay, if I were to add an oxygen to it, so if I add an oxygen, okay, one oxygen, then I would and um, yeah, then all I would do is I would add the prefix per. So, for example, SO2 negative, sorry, SO2, uh, SO5, I've added an oxygen, okay, this one will be called persulfate, persulfate, okay, that's easy enough. If I were to subtract, I'll get to the charge in a minute, um, it's even easier, if I were to subtract one oxygen, okay, so for example I'm now working with SO and I'm, I'm talking about the base I'm subtracting it from the base now of SO3 then what we do is the 8 changes to an ite okay so this one would be sulfite Okay, if I were to subtract another oxygen, okay, then I would add to the sulfite or to the, um, yeah, to this base, okay, I would add a prefix hypo. So, hyposulfite. Now, in this case, SO2 is not an ion. 
okay this in this case it's not an ion this is a molecule so we don't have we do get hyposulfates but they're slightly more complicated it's a it's a multiple of these two rather but don't have to you don't have to worry about that so much as long as you know that this is actually a a, a substance a molecule okay so it's not an anion which means it's got a zero charge it has no need for valence electrons okay um and then well, actually, this is the convention. This is how I would name all of the others. It's not that difficult. All I know is the base gets 8. The um, If I subtract 1, it changes to 8. If I add 1, I add a per to the some, uh, per something 8. Okay. And if I subtract another 1 from from the one already with the 8, then I add the prefix hypo. And before that, if I subtract another one, um, then it, it would either be a compound um, that that uh, or a molecule itself, or it will um, already just be the element itself. Okay, so let me go into a few more examples. Let's take, and I think what I will do is is not put anything on here. I'll start with this, and uh, we'll look at what would we call. C L O. Okay. Uh, actually, let me just do the charge quickly because it's so easy. The charge remains the same. Okay. So, for example, per, per sulfate also has a two negative charge. So the original charge stays the same. Now you might ask, but how is that possible? How can you then add uh, uh, an oxygen that wants two more valence electrons? Shouldn't it become um, four negative okay well here's the thing the moment we add an oxygen okay that oxygen needs to needs to share two of his electrons okay or needs two electrons to fill up his energy level but the other oxygens um, also had these two valence electrons so all they'll do is he'll come in and he will share that Okay, I'm not going to go too much into the detail of this because it it, uh, it might start confusing all of us. So all you need to know is that if I still have an anion, um, even with different number of oxygens, for the same compound, for the same uh, uh, element in the beginning, okay, my charge will remain the same. Okay, so that, that is important. Okay, um, so to go on with my example, the example that I started with, okay, in this example, I want to know what is the charge and the name of of this of this element, okay, or, or of this um, anion. So if I go and have a look at chlorine, there's chlorine on the white. I'll use a darker color or chlorine. Okay, you might recall there's the T, there's the 4, and there's the 3. Okay, so chlorine is going to get 3 oxygens. And then on here, this is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. And he will have a charge of negative 1. Okay, so I know that this one's charge is going to be negative, and he's going to um, and he's going to get 3 oxygens. The base will have 3 oxygens. Okay, so the base would be chlorate. Chlorate would be the base, and then the base would have three oxygens. If I go back to until I only have one oxygen, I must add hypo to my prefix, okay, as a prefix, and it. Okay, so if I went one back, it would I would have to change the eight to eight, and if I go one more back, I have to add a hypo. So this is hypochlorite, hypochlorite with a negative charge. Okay, let me grab a random one here. Let's go for C. Let's go for CO four. Okay, now CO2 is similar to SO2, SO2, CO2, all of these ones, um, SO2, CO2, those are actually compounds, okay, 
uh, sorry, not compounds, molecules, so they are substances, they're not anions. Okay, so um, I didn't go for CO2, I'm going for CO4. Okay, so I want to know what's the charge and what's the name of that one. Well, we know it's carbon. We can see carbon lies in the T, so the base will have three, will be three. Okay, and so that would be carbonate. And if I add one oxygen, it will be percarbonate. Okay, so this one will be called percarbonate. And percarbonate with four oxygens will have, uh, sorry, with, yeah, four oxygens will have the same charge as with three. And all you need to know is that we start with negative three, negative two, negative one. So the percarbonate will have a negative. Uh, a two negative charge. Okay, let me do one final example and then you you'll see. So again, let's just go for iodine with um, let's say with two oxygens. Okay, so iodine iodine with two oxygens. Okay, uh, so I know this is ionate, ionate, so it's either nate or ite, so let me leave out that. So I know this is ionite or nate, okay, we'll see in a moment. We can see since he is in the T41, the 1 is actually also a 3, so we know he gets 3 oxygens in its base. Okay, I should have, okay, I'll do another one with four in the base. Okay, and uh, since I've got two, that means I go back one step and this becomes Ionite. Okay, so let's do one with a base of in the fours. Okay, so let's take, uh, I suppose, um, Phosphor five, uh, or let's take Phosphor P, Oh, um, two. Okay, take PO two, and this one will be um, as its name will be phosphate or phosphite. So phosphate or fight. We'll leave out the A or I. Okay, and then we'll see that the base. The base for the naming system, since phosphor is in the four, he will have four oxygens in his base. So four. And if I wanted to get phosphor um, with only two oxygens, I'd need to go back one, two. Okay. And if I do go back two oxygens, then I must add an eight instead of an eight and a hypo in front in front. So this is hypophosphite. Okay, I think that is fairly easy. Let's um, let's see um, if we can do the opposite. Just one example doing the opposite. Let's say what would be the charge oh sorry I didn't do the charges in these last two. Okay, iodine, all of these have a negative one charge. Okay, so this um, ionite one will have a negative charge and phosphate O2, phosphate has a negative three. As I start the T and the four, both of them start with a negative three in the corner and everything below them have the same charge. Okay, so um, this one, phosphate, is set at negative three and the charge just stays the same, so it's three negative. Okay, let's start with, uh, let's see, what would the formula be for borite? Okay, borite, we know that's boron with oxygen. In the base of boron, we would have three oxygens. So if I'm eight, it means I went one less than three, so two. Okay, the charge on boron, three negative, because he's the first one in the T. Okay, let's do one more example. Okay, let's try, um, let's try uh, per 
bro mate per bro mate per bro mate is brome okay with oxygens we see in the base of bromate we have um, he's in the three so that's three so per per bromate means I've added one oxygen okay so I have three plus one so I've got four oxygens and now just the charge the charge for all of these in the third sorry in the seventh um, uh, column group 7 is negative 1 or 1 negative okay um, I, I really think this is very simple uh, once you know all this and uh, have the names of all of this and in the next video we'll actually look at how um, uh, at uh, some ionic bonds okay so and how to name ionic bonds we looked at naming covalent bonds naming polyatomic anions now what how would we name a substance that is a bond between uh, two ions so this is the naming of the ions what we would we call a compound where we name the two um, or what would name the compound if we have an ionic bond well I'll see you in that video I hope this was helpful and I uh, see you soon